Ladies and gentlemen, 300 years ago, on the 18th of March, 1689, this castle was held in defiance of the monarchy of William and Mary by the Duke of Gordon supporting the Stuart cause. In order to keep peace in the city, pending the Scottish estates confirming the nation's loyalty to William and Mary, David, Earl of Leven, was ordered to raise a regiment forthwith. And you're looking now at a selection of that group. The warrant of authority had been loudly read at the Mercat Cross just down the hill near St. Giles Cathedral, the same idea as putting out an announcement on today's telly and radio. And the men, around 800 of them, moved on down the Royal Mile to be enlisted near the close of Holyrood Abbey. And you will shortly see some men coming out to be enlisted. Until 1751, they were known as Leven's Regiment or the Edinburgh Regiment. And certainly, it was the men of Edinburgh who brought them up to strength within two hours of the first recruit joining. And today's King's Own Scottish Borderers, as they now are, dominate our border country. But for all that, they have the motto of Edinburgh and the device of Edinburgh Castle on their cap badge. And they have the right to march through the city with bayonets fixed and colours flying and drums beating. And all this stems from those men of Leven on the Esplanade Isle, who are moving off shortly to be trained. Let us look at their history from the first recruit who with his comrades was trained within a mere four months to fight so bravely against the rebel Highlanders under Bonnie Dundee at Killiecrankie. The regiment again fought the Highland rebels at Sheriff Muir, lost over 200 officers and men at Fontenoy in 1745, garrisoned Edinburgh Castle in the same year against Prince Charles Edward, and fought in the force which defeated him at Culloden. At Minden in 1759, they were one of six regiments, totaling 5,000 men, who advanced, together with the Hanoverian infantry, against large numbers of French cavalry, and won the day. Before the battle, they picked roses from the hedgerows and gardens and stuck them in their bonnets. And they do so on the 1st of August to this day. And there, up in the battlements, you see a soldier of the day doing just that. And on the other side of the battlements, you see there an officer of 1859. And going back to where we started, a private of 1882 in Tartan for the first time. For most of that century, the regiment served in such far-flung parts as West Indies, South Africa, India, Gibraltar, helping to build the empire. The King's Own Scottish Borderers saw more than their share of action and casualties in the First World War. As just one example of their bravery, Piper Daniel Laidlaw won the Victoria Cross as badly wounded and under heavy fire, he played the regiment's march of the 7th Battalion, the Blue Bonnets, on the trench parapet as his comrades went over the top. We were waiting in the trenches as patiently as we could while our artillery gave the enemy a thorough bombarding, a task that took more than a day, I can tell you. On the Saturday morning, a day I am not likely to forget, we got the order to take the German trenches. At 6.30 in the morning, bugles sounded the advance, and I got over the parapet with Lieutenant Young, who, I am sorry to say, has since been killed. I had once set the pipes going, and the laddies gave a cheer as they started off for the enemy's lines. The regiment had an illustrious record in the Second World War and since then has played its part in the handing back of the Empire. It has also been in on other forms of action. Korea, where they held their ground, outnumbered 10 to 1 and won a Victoria Cross. Three years fighting terrorists in Malaya. And up there is a soldier dressed as they were dressed for that purpose in Malaya. A campaign in the barren and burning rocks north of Aden, much service in Northern Ireland. And so we come to the regiment of today, recently back from Germany and serving now in their city of Edinburgh. And here they are, a guard of today's King's Own Scottish Borderers, accompanying their regimental colour. <laughs> 